Mark Pearson was making his way back home during a busy commute when he passed a complete stranger. In that split second, his life changed forever after she falsely accused him of sexual assault. Well, on Friday, Mark was found not guilty, and he joins us now alongside Aaron Pitsy, who has been his avid campaigner. The day that this took place was um, December the 3rd, 2014, 6.40, your regular commute. The amount of times you've walked through Waterloo Station at that time, hundreds of times. Do you actually remember that day in particular? No, nothing. It was just an ordinary day going home from work. So the first you knew about any of this was later on. This was on the, the 5th of February 2015 when you got a knock at the door. Sure. And it was the police? Yeah, that was two months after the so-called event. And what did they say? Uh, they just said, come and come in. There were six of them, what I now know is called a Trojan team. And they go around London picking people up who are wanted by the police, mm. the transport police. And so you must have been thinking, gosh, at some point, I mean, I'll, I'll be very fully cooperative, which you were. You went down to the police station, you gave them all the information that you had. Like you said, you don't remember this day in question because there were so many similar days like it. Nothing stuck out in your head. And you must have been just thinking at this point, common sense will prevail. Surely they'll yeah. realise that they have got the wrong person. I mean, I, I had the option not to say anything. Uh, my solicitor, the duty solicitor, said you could either say no comment or you could be fully cooperative, which mm. is what I did, because any normal person would assume that common sense would prevail. They mm. would look at the CCTV footage which they had, compare that with what the woman was saying, and conclude that it was preposterous. It was just nonsense what she was saying. So it's four months after that that you were then phoned by your solicitor and, and he said, you're going to be charged. Yeah and then this is going to go to court. That was the worst day of my life. And there were no witnesses. There was no forensic evidence to this. No. Uh, the, the biggest bit of evidence that they actually had was the CCTV footage. And now, in her statement that she gave to the police, it was two to three seconds that this moment happened on passing. Well, she said... Uh, um, she's a, she's a, a, a well-known actress in her, in her 60s and claimed that you sexually assaulted her penetratively for two or three seconds, um, and this was followed, she insisted, by a violent blow to her left shoulder. And since this has all come to light, and we've all seen the CCTV footage, it, it, it is impossible for that to have happened. It totally contradicts what she's saying. And what I don't understand is why the CPS, even the police, didn't see that. I mean, I, I hold the CPS more responsible because we actually had the CCTV uh, footage analysed by an expert at Warwick University, uh, a guy called Jacob Blythe, who I thank, and the CPS still proceeded with the trial. The CPS have said in their statement there was sufficient evidence for this case to proceed to court and progress to a trial. Uh, we respect the decision of the jury. They're saying there is evidence. We've got the evidence here in front of us. So wh where is this going wrong? There seems to be a, a serious problem here, It's there? a systemic problem with the CPS. There's something gone radically wrong with their processes. Well, it... it, it on analysis of that CCTV footage, you didn't break stride. You passed her, possibly without even brushing her. You passed her exactly. in half a second. Sure. Uh, and yet all of this is supposed to have taken place. You, you have a bag, you've got your hand on the strap with, uh, with, uh, with your left, right, right hand, hand, I think, and then your left hand, you're carrying a newspaper. So you, you, you must have thought, how Even if how I had I... more time, logistically, it's not possible to do what she accused me of. I would have to have walked forwards while leaning backwards. So what has this done to you then? Because, I mean, you, you've lived with this for a year. You've been named. She remains anonymous, not named at all. So as a person, as a man, how does this feel to be accused of something that you have I done? should have remained anonymous as well, although I chose eventually to, to give my name to the newspapers mm. because I wanted to publicise this to stop it happening to other people. Mm. It should never have happened to me, and it... For all I know, it's happening to other people right now. Well, it took the, uh, the jury uh, 90 minutes uh, to, uh, to decide, nine women, three men, uh, to reach their verdict and, uh, and to reject her story. Erin, um, you normally, you're, you're a campaigner for, for, for women's issues. Uh, for, you started the first uh, domestic... Um, the a, first refuge yeah, yes, in the world. Centre in the world. It, yeah. um, but this time you're on the side of the man. And I've always, I've always said it's generational family violence. Mm. It affects both men and women, and particularly children. And in a case like this, we had a mutual friend. I didn't know Mark a year ago. 
Uh, we had a mutual friend, and she suggested that he phone me to, for help. Mm. And when he came to see me, I was terribly worried about him mm. because he was in such a state of shock. And p people die. They commit suicide in situations like this. Mm. And he, you had to have help, didn't you? You had to go to the doctor. I had therapy myself. I'm, yeah. not, surprised. No, I'm not surprised. And looking, looking at that evidence, um, what conclusion well, did you come to? Well, I knew from the beginning, as soon as he told me what happened, I, it's a false allegation. And one of the problems is that the police, and I've been on other cases where they've said that they don't have the right to drop things. It all Anything to do with sex or sexual abuse and rape has to go to the CPS. And the CPS have, a, unfortunately, a very, very jaundiced look at anything to do with men. And I've been watching men targeted now for several years, dragged through the courts, humiliated and, and really persecuted.